if you are coming up with a policy, it is equally very important you take cognizance of the society you are. You are bringing up a cashless policy in Nigeria where we don't even have up to half of the population having bank accounts. Mm. There are drivers who don't have bank accounts. How do they transport election materials? How do you pay these people? As far as I'm concerned, if we say, because what an average Nigerian is going through right now is very terrible. Mm. You are a Nigerian, I'm a Nigerian. Some of us, let me say we are semi-elites. Mm. No matter how bad the situation is, or no matter the economy of the jungle, our lion will not eat grass. Mm. We we'll still find means. But we have been to places we have seen how people suffer mm. to get their ad and money. INEC is an organization as far as I'm concerned. Fine, they may have access to cash, but we're told that there is not even enough cash. How do they go about it? Transportation problem is going to be the major problem INEC is going to face. A very serious problem. There are areas where these people will go to that they have to do every single thing with cash. You can't force cashless policy on people. No, it doesn't work that way. You try as much as possible to pet people, let them see reasons they should stick to the idea of cashless policy. However, there is no society of the world that is completely cashless. Mm. And it will never happen. Because people keep money for various motives. Fine. INEC is a government parastatal. Definitely, they are going to have access to cash. But how safe is that cash going to be with INEC? You must engage Road Transport Employers Association of Nigeria, whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. You must engage National Union of Road Transport Workers, whether you like it or not. It's just like you telling a driver that is driving you from Guagualada to maybe Area 1 that you want to pay him or her with your card. Would that work? No. The government needs to do a critical review of the policy at hand. With what you've said so far, I'm here thinking that um, could this give rise to some level of compromises? Because um, yes, in one breath, INEC has assured that look, we have, we can go on with these elections without any hitches, you know. Uh, they've done all they can to allay the fears of, the fears of Nigerians. But then with what you're saying, I'm thinking that there could be one compromise here or the other because we've seen situations where um, in time past, in some elections in the past, where people, INEC goes into a certain community and you discover that the community leader in that place or a youth leader in that place who also belongs to a particular political party is the one mobilizing mm -hmm. transportation for INEC. So when things like that happen, wouldn't that affect the conduct of the election in itself? It, it will, definitely. Because man, they say, is a product of his environment. Our way of behavior and sense of dialogue in Nigeria to an extent is affecting us. That's why I have always been an advocate of attitudinal changes or reconfiguration from the micro level. If a community leader who has sympathy for a particular political party is in charge of transportation. It is very possible that such person, once they see handwritings on the wall that they may lose election, they can frustrate their transportation system. Anything can happen. Because I always expect that it is not few days to election that INEC will begin to engage transporters. No. You should have a database of your transport network. You should have people that are going to convey these things to each polling unit, being tracked and being monitored from time to time. And you think they don't have it? I doubt. Because most times, INEC will have to go to the grassroots to engage drivers. Days to election. Even various transport unions will also play their own politics because they can't engage all the drivers. Favoritism will come in. 
those who, who let me say, those who have some level of, you know, uh, integrity may not be engaged because they don't have sympathy for the same uh, for a so-called political party. Things are happening everywhere, and I don't feel what's going to to help us in this 2023 election is the beavers and the newly signed electoral act. Okay. Whether we like it or not, let's give it to the president. Because when you read the electoral act, you find out that there are innovations. Mm -hmm. And it's going to help. I just urge Nigerians to always believe in our system. Because before politics even come up, people have people start criticizing the you know the policy, it's not good, is this, is this, rigging this one. No. Let's have faith in the system. For Nigeria to grow is for you and I to be a better citizen. At every point in time, our level of patriotism must be very high. In a country where citizens are not patriotic, such a country will never grow. Never. All right, okay. So now that we've found ourselves in this situation, what are the possible solutions? Because it's barely two weeks from now and then we need to really act fast. As far as force scarcity is concerned, PMS must be made available. And the reason I said INEC is going to run into problems is simple. For instance, I come from Shaki West local government in Oyo State. And you have to convey election materials from Ibadan to Shaki. Within Shaki West alone, there are other communities or villages that will take you about 40, 45 minutes to get to. Some you have to cross rivers. How much do they sell a liter of petrol in those villages? I was at Ekiti over the weekend, last weekend. Iye Ekiti, to be precise, a liter of fuel was sold at the rate of 420 naira. Mm. Are you now going to pay drivers on the basis of the amount they are going to buy fuel in those places? Or you are going to pay everybody the same flat rate, yeah. the flat rate? How do you do that? These are problems they are not envisaging. And they will actually happen. If you pay me 15,000 Naira, I'm conveying electoral materials to Nasara Toto. And somebody is conveying electoral ele 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 materials from Amak to Cuba. Are you going to pay us flat rates? Except INEC will make PMS available to all drivers at the official rates, irrespective of where they are driving to. Outside that, most drivers will not be able to make it. Well, that is that is a bit uh, <laughs> that's yes. a bit uh, scary mm. uh, to, to to say the least. Because mm. if anything can happen to a vehicle. Let's imagine I'm just driving and my fuel consumption, the fuel consumption of the vehicle increases all of a sudden. How do I manage to, to buy fuel along the way when there is none? What do I do? I maintain status quo. Wait till I get fuel. Okay. Um, do you, I, I know that um, distribution of materials has always been a challenge, even before the redesign Naira and everything of Naira. We're talking about um, the River Rhine areas. We know of a fact that there is no electoral year that, you know, these staff don't even drown. What do you think, apart from uh, fuel or Naira, what if it is provided, what do you think are the solutions in those areas that are prone to, you know, people drowning and um, life hazards like that? Water accidents, yes, air mishaps, mm. road accidents, all have means of managing them. Right? Mm. You are putting a youth core member on a boat without a life jacket. What do you expect? Mm. It is very important to really engage. You see, there are situations where you cannot engage outsiders because they do not have the knowledge of that particular area. Like all those river line areas, it is very important to engage the locals. Mm -hmm. It is very, very important to engage the locals. I can assure you that most of those river line areas have over 80% of their population knowing how to swim. 
engage them. Let them be on ground in case of any boat be shot. They can come in. Mm -hmm. Engage the locals in riverine areas. It's going to help a lot. Mm -hmm. But quickly, uh, Nigeria, if there's any other thing, I, I, I like the fact that you attributed, you commended the federal government for um, the success of the, I mean, the new electoral law and the beavers, how now that the beavers is backed by law and all of that. But can you sit here and confidently affirm to Nigerians that, I know you're not speaking for INEC, but as an observer, can you confidently, confidently affirm to the fact that rigging during this election will be difficult? Because with all of the challenges we have mentioned, somewhere at the back of my mind, and maybe other Nigerians could be thinking that this could be other ways that maybe politicians or certain persons, you know, we've heard all of that a lot, cabals and what have you, that uh, that could be another way around to try and rig the election or compromise the conduct of the election. But can you say for a fact that elections this period around will not be rigged? Well, I am of the belief that it will be very difficult to rig this election. Very, very difficult. Because INEC must have spent hundreds of millions securing their server. Because the only way you can rig this election is to break into their server. Mm. It is beavers. Results are going to be transmitted right from the polling units. Nigerians should just have faith in INEC. INEC in recent times have conducted elections and we have seen situations where PDP won, where APC won, irrespective of APC being the ruling government or the ruling party. So if other political parties can be winning election, you should know it's free. But I may not say it will be totally fair because in most instances you see record a bit of electoral violence and all. But I am very convinced that, that this election will be very difficult to rig. Nigerians should just be optimistic. They should give INEC the chance because this is the first time we are going to deploy these beavers as regards to our general election. Yeah. Let's, let's have the faith. Let's have hope in INEC. Let's, let's, let's do it. Because we have seen situations where people decided to w wanted to vote, mm. and because they could not be captured, captured mm. or accredited, mm. you will not vote. That's how it should be. That's how it should be. The era of writing one paper, somebody, even now if you st steal ballot box, you're on your own. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> All those ballot box snatchers, they should snatch. It's of no use. It is irrelevant. The moment result has... And if you do that, before result is transmitted, no election. So why are you wasting your time? Efforts in futility. You just want to pick ballot box and think you can run away with it? No. I commend President Muhammad Dubuari over this electoral act. So we should just have hope in INEC. Right. I'm very convinced. Okay. For us as individuals and Nigerian citizens, what um, responsibilities should we you know, put in place? The most important responsibility from Nigerians is discipline. I'm very sorry to say this, and I, not, I don't mean to offend any Nigerian, but there is a high level of ind indiscipline in the land. I'm telling you. Nigerians find it so difficult to, to, to have a strict compliance to rules and regulations. And when citizens fail to do this, the country will not grow. As individuals, on election day, it is your duty to vote. It is your right. Not even a duty. It is your right. Nobody can deprive you of that right. Why don't you also maintain highest level of decorum? Stay off electoral violence. Stay off, you know, attacking people unjustly and unnecessarily. Political leaders will not do this. It is still the masses they will use. Mm. Yes. Yes. Until recently that we see some politicians coming out with their kids for campaign. It doesn't happen. It's because Nigerians are wise and they begin, they, be, they are asking questions. Bring out your kids. Let's do the campaign together and come and see how it looks. So Nigerians should know that their blood, their life is very important. Let us get disciplined. Take your PVCs. Maintain 
order. Be on the queue. Get accredited. Vote. If you cannot vote, you have a party agent that will stay back. Mm. Reports will definitely get to you. But the era of we no go glee or we wait till they count. Yes, you can, you can wait. But be disciplined. Be disciplined. Nigerians need a level of discipline. The level of indiscipline in the land is too much. All right. Well, that would be a good place to live it. You know, whenever we talk so much about leadership, uh, we make we complain about what leaders are doing, what they are not doing, and all of that. We also have to look inwards and look at what role we have to play as citizens as well. You know, for the submission here is that regardless of all that has been said here, if the Nigerian people are determined to ensure that the elections are safe, uh, credible, and fair, well, uh, fair is still contentious, but then we can achieve this and have new sets of leaders uh, in the country without any rancor of any sort. would like to say many thanks to our guest, um, Dr. Lakunle Ibrahim, a public affairs analyst, for making time to be with us here Thank in you. the studio this morning. Thank, Thank you so much for coming. So and you. of course, we have been looking at fuel, Nigeria, fuel, Naira scarcity, analyzing INIC challenges and solutions. Well, we have a long weekend ahead of us. I just hope that for those of you who do not have cash, you're able to get cash, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> Be orderly <laughs> when you even go to the ATMs. Please do not sell Naira notes. It's illegal. It's illegal. It's the, it's the least I can say. I cannot force you uh, not to do that, but then it is illegal. Atinuke. All right. Okay. So just keep to it. Um, we should quit blaming everything on the government. You should know that I am the government and, you know, the slogan change begins with me. So join us same time, same station next week. Bye for now. Goodbye.